Abby, you always hold the book you're unholding for the thumbnail. Why haven't you done that? There's a metric hell ton, okay? I can't hold all these. <laughs> hey guys, it's Abby from Abby of Pelinor, and today I am doing probably the biggest unhaul I've done on my channel. So I, one time previously, did an unhaul about as big as this, but it was filled with a lot of slimmer books, um, lots of like kids books, and I ended up donating them to my old primary school, um, elementary for Americans. I did that before I started my channel, so there's not actually any video evidence of it. There is one very bad photo of it on my bookstagram if you go way, way back. But this is the biggest unhaul I have ever done on my channel. And we can thank Caitlin from Mad Cheshire Rabbit. Because without her... <laughs> So some of these, a couple of these, I decided on myself before I spoke to Caitlin. But we sat down, and I think it was on a Friday afternoon, and we went through our shelves. This is the moment where Caitlin realised that I have a shit ton of books. Um, but we went through and she persuaded me to get rid of quite a lot of them. So, let's get into it now. That was a long intro, let's just get into it. I'm going to start off with this big set of books. This is, oh hello hair. This is the DK Eyewitnesses Children's Reference Set. Uh, it says it costs £59.90. and pence. I don't know if my parents paid that because I think this is actually one of the ones that was, um, you know, when you cut out the thing off the top of the cereal box and you send it in and you get a book. Hey, I think it was that. Um, which just is demonstrating my age because we don't really do that in the UK anymore. Uh, <laughs> but let me go through the books there. So we have, and this one's hard for me to get rid of, but we have Volcanoes. We have rocks and minerals. <laughs> Weather, ancient Greece, space exploration. <laughs> whale. I don't know why it's just one whale, but whale. Shark. Castle. They really need to pl pluralize these. <laughs> and finally, Viking. And now I have the creepy shark picture staring up at me because it's the only book that landed face up. So yes, I'm going to get rid of those. I haven't touched them in years. And whilst part of me would want to keep them for both nostalgia and for the fact that it's like some of them are in my wheelhouse and of interest to me, they're going to be going to my old school. So they're going to get a lot of goodies out of them. Now the rest of the books are not... Oh no, that's a lie. That's a lie. I have three books that are on top that I would mention first. The rest of them are not in any particular order. So let's go to those three first. This is the back of a book. Um, the reason I'm showing you the back of it and the reason why my hand's covering it is that this is a collection of things that were written by school children in my middle school. Don't ask, I know I'm English. It was a weird system. Um, and we were publishing a book. I don't want to keep it anymore, but my mum does. So it's going to my mum. So it's being unhauled from my possession. But yes, it mentions the school on both the front and the back. And the side! Oh, so yeah, you're getting this. Uh, but I have one story, well, I think it's a poem in here. Um, let me see. A dolly dreaming when I was in year eight. Um, which is, oh fucking hell. How old is year eight? It's gonna be grade oh, nine? Or seven? I forget whether it goes up or down. I don't know. Figure it out yourselves. It's online. But yeah, it's about a, a doll that's been abandoned. It's about a doll that was abandoned and is unhappy. I instinctively held up the book. It's going. I need to stop throwing it on the floor. Um, and then the next two that are of note are these two. We've got Black Cake Landsman by Ron Stallworth and Gun Button to Fire by Tom Neal. Both of these were gifted to me by my partner and both of them are going to actually go to my partner. They weren't intended as like something to borrow, they were just gifts, but although this was really interesting, I don't like how it was written, and me and my partner saw the film together, so he wants to read the book. With this one, I really enjoyed it. It was written really well, but I won't pick it up again, so he's actually going to ask um, either of his parents whether they would be interested in reading this, so that's where this is going. In other words, it'll come back to me eventually. <laughs> but it's gone for now, okay? Okay, so I have... Let, let me just... E, 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 e. I have three canvas bags full of books. And now I have to reset up the camera. <laughs> e, 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 e. 
So yes, I have three canvas bags full of books, um, so let, let's just go through them. Let's just go through them. A Field Guide to the Wildlife of the British Isles by Alice Thompson. This was actually really good. Um, I really enjoyed the information that I learnt from this. It's a legit, it, it is what it says on the tin. The reason I'm getting rid of this is because I would only refer back to it for one thing and that would be the birds and I have an RSPB guide to British birds so it seems redundant to have them both despite the fact that this has a really cute head on the front um, but it also contains fish which I don't deal well with so yeah this is going thank you very much Grandpa I appreciate it I've read it love you I need to stop throwing these my dad is phoning me the kids yep I'm back I had to go check if we had sausages in the freezer so back to where we were we have Oh, my voice is going as well. Yeah, man. We've got Aru Halls of Hell by David Meredith. This is the second book in the Aru Geology trilogy. I'm not sure. I was gifted both the first book and this book by the author himself in exchange for an honest review. I read the first book. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. The oh, my voice. The first half was not as good as I thought it was going to be. The second half was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I've not been motivated to pick this one back up. I will be getting rid of the first one, but it's in a box somewhere in the garage, so it's not going to be counted in this unhaul, but yes, this is going. Ooh, one I've read- <coughs> This is annoying. One that I've read, which is A Stranger in the House by Shari Lupina. This was just, nah. Just, eh. Nah. I'm gonna go get a drink. I work in a call centre. Got a drink. Which also means my, uh... The lipstick is going to periodically come off, but hey. Another book and another thriller that I read and was disappointed in is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I almost DNF'd this after 50 pages. I wish I had DNF'd this after 50 pages. It was a waste of time. I think it's the lowest rated book that I've read so far in 2021. I just didn't care about any of the characters, so um, it's going. Dr. Turner's Casebook, based on the BBC hit drama called The Midwife by Stephen or Stephen McGann. This I kept because I have all of the other Call the Midwife books. Um, and when I say Call the Midwife books, I mean the memoirs from Jennifer Worth. This, however, is specifically based on the TV show, and it is fictionalised utilising real historical facts and real medical facts. It's very good. I enjoyed reading through it, but I won't read it again and I don't need to keep it for my collection. So this one's gonna go, and some other Call the Midwife fa fan some other Call the Midwife fan will find this in a charity shop and be very pleased. Seriously guys, working in a call centre just screws with your voice. Going back to thrillers, but not one that I've read. Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This one is going because I didn't really enjoy The Girl on the Train. I read it. It was fine. I probably would have felt the same about it as dark places, as in I probably would have been like, gosh, I DNF'd it if I read it now. I don't particularly care to read this, and this isn't as bad as it seems. I didn't buy this hardback, it was gifted to me by my aunt, who gets rid of all her books after she's read them. So, this was going, I intercepted it, I'm letting it go again. Okay, next up are two that I've really struggled with for a long time. And then Caitlin yelled at me, so they're going. Uh <laughs> And that is Girl Online on tour and Girl Online going solo. Now, if you know me at all, you're probably thinking, Abby, what the fuck? My mum gifted me the first book. She used to work in Debrick Smith's as a second job, and it came out, and she knew it was a YouTuber who wrote it, and it was for teens, and I was a teen who watched a lot of YouTube. Now, she got it slightly wrong, in that I didn't watch Zoe Suck. However, the intent was delightful, and the first book was like a really basic YA contemporary, and it was fine. There was nothing wrong, it was fine. It wasn't well written, because it wasn't even written by Zoe Zerg. Like, it wasn't well written, it wasn't anything fancy, it was just eh. Eh. And so, I think my mum got me the second one, and then I saw the third one and was like, well, this is in the same edition, because I have it in the kind of hardcover edition. So I may as well pick them up. I've had these for years, they came out years ago, and I am probably never going to read them, so I probably should just get rid of Girl Online as well. Part of the reason that I'm struggling to, one, is that look at these colours. And Girl Online is like a bright baby blue, so they're beautiful together, and two, I really struggled to get rid of gifts from my mum 
I really struggle and um, maybe that's pathetic I don't know but I do I really struggle to get rid of gifts from my mum and these are linked to it like obviously these well girl on tour is the gift girl online by itself would be the gift as well but like the whole trilogy but they're going because I'm not going to read them when have you ever seen me pick up girly YA contemporary I don't think I've picked it up since I picked up the first one, so these have to go, even though it hurts. Oh, okay. Well, I may as well mention these. They're not books, but I've got a little Scarecrow Queen postcard. I read The Sin Eater's Daughter. I like that. I've got an exclusive sneak peek of The Exact Opposite of OK by Laura Stephen, who is an author from Up My Neck of the Woods. Uh, I really like this, actually. It's really well done. Really good YA contemporary aimed at teenage girls. However, it's about... Um, Despite the fact that she's from my region, which is the northeast of England, it's set in the US. It's about, um, what is it called? I can't remember. Revenge porn. When you uh, upload a picture of your partner or ex-partner that they sent to you in confidence. The reason it's set in the US is that uh, that's illegal in the UK, so the entire storyline wouldn't have worked. <laughs> so she had to set it in the US instead, because it's still illegal in certain states there. And then the last one is an exclusive sneak peek at A Map of Days. Uh, by Ransom Riggs, the fourth uh, Paragon's book. I'm not going to continue with the trilogy. I own the first two. I need to get the third one and then I'm happy just leaving it at that trilogy. So I don't need this. I've not read it. I'm not going to. Hey. Oh, we've got some paperbacks. Okay. First up, we've got Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I grabbed this because I've heard so many amazing things. The concept sounds interesting and I've heard great things about Leanne Moriarty as an author. However, Yes, this is a mystery thriller sort of thing, but it's also based around children in a school. Not my sort of vibe, and I'm going off of mysteries anyway. I'm more going off of thrillers than going off of mysteries, but I'm going off of them anyway. It seems silly to have a 500 page book on my shelves that I'm going to be reluctant to pick up. So it's got In a similar vein, I'm going to be getting rid of World Without End by Ken Follett. This is the second book in the... which trilogy is it? The Pillars of the Earth series. I have kept The Pillars of the Earth in a similar edition uh, for two reasons. One, it sounds interesting, and two, it's very pretty and Caitlin said she would kill me if I got rid of it. However, this one is less pretty and it was also written like 10-20 years after the first one so it's not intent- it wasn't intended to be a series so I don't feel bad about not reading it and also again I haven't managed to finish a Ken Follett book yet. This one is 1,200 pages of historical fiction. A genre that I like but I don't read as much of anymore. I need to be realistic. I'm already keeping more Ken Follett books than I should be. I still have four Ken Follett books. And that's... I'm being too nice on myself with keeping them but I can't bring myself to do it yet. So basically I need to read at least one thing by him before I can justify getting rid of it. <laughs> it's taking me a while. But yes, this one can go. One bag done! Hey, Carrie, let me explain. So, Carrie from Caring for Books got me this book. However, oh, do I have to go get it? I'll send you a picture, Carrie. But <laughs> I have another copy of this book um, that was hidden away, and it's the exact same book, but it's an illustrated copy with ancient Roman illustrations on the front, and it's gorgeous. I can't justify keeping both copies, and part of me is like, oh, I should keep this one because it's from Carrie. But I like the other cover better. So I hope you don't mind. I know that you'll understand. I know that I'm being silly and that you're going to be like, of course, it's fine. But part of me is like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so yes, I'm getting rid of this one. Not because I don't massively appreciate it, not because I don't think I'm going to love the book, but because I have another copy with a brilliant cover. I'm really sorry. Thank you so much, Carrie. <laughs> Friend Request by Laura Marshall. This is another one that my aunt read and then I intercepted. I just don't think I'm going to pick this one up. Again, I've been going off of thrillers lately, so what is the point in me having one of my shelves that I'm not excited for? This I've heard good reviews about. Um, it's about someone who gets a friend request on Facebook from someone who's dead, or supposed to be dead, and it goes from there. It sounds good, but not for me. Ooh! One I've read. So this is The Monogram Murders by Sophie Hanna, written in the style of Agatha Christie, with permission from the Agatha Christie estate. This is basically the estate saying that Sophie Hanna can continue with the Poirot stories. 
This is really good. It's really good. I read it as an ebook. I got it as an ARC from NetGalley. I read it on there, saw this in a second hand shop and thought I really like this, I'd like to own a physical version. I don't need to own a physical version. That was a different me. Uh, but yeah, I don't need to own this physically. Somebody else will really enjoy it and get to actually enjoy the story. I'm not going to pick this up and read it again. But if you see this in a charity shop or like with a deal on like ebooks, I advise picking it up. It's really well done. I've read a decent amount of Poirot and a decent amount of Christie and Sophie Hanna I think really manages to capture the essence really well whilst also bringing it up to date for a modern audience. Some of the issues that Christie had that were partially because of the time that she was from, they aren't in here. Um, and also I think that this is just very, very clever. So if you ever see anything by Sophie Hanna just writing as herself, I would be tempted to pick that one up as well. But. We shall see. Ooh, one that I read very recently, which is Pompeii, nowadays and 2000 years ago. This doesn't have a specific author because that's not actually what it's for. This is intended as something that you pick up when you're going around the historical site of Pompeii as like a tour guidebook. So like, uh, where's, where's an example? They're all numbered and it tells you like where to go um, and they would have had different editions in different languages. This was gifted to me probably two decades ago when we lived in Italy. If I go back I won't need this guide for various reasons. This is in Lira! This... It's definitely, definitely gifted to me when we lived there. All of the European countries used to have their own currency. Britain is one of the few that has kept their own currency because we are stubborn bastards. Every other European country has switched to euros. This is in Italy's old currency. <laughs> That's how old this book is. So yeah, if I do go back, which I would like to do, I'd like to go back with my partner, just because he's never been able to go. Um, but yes, if we do go back, I would either want a an in-person tour guide or a more modern book. Uh, this was interesting. I've been around Pompeii two, ti two times that I have memory of, okay? I may have went around as a bambino, I don't remember. But yes, so as far as I can tell from the times that I've went round and the little research that I've done on my own, it's accurate still, just not quite up to date. There's more discoveries that have happened since this because they're constantly excavating. Um, so those aren't mentioned as well as like different scientific methods that are able to be used to discover things. It's out of date, <laughs> but I did enjoy reading it. So horses and pony, st oh, sorry, horse and pony stories chosen by Christine Pauline Thompson. This was gifted to me by my aunt on my dad's side. So most of my books that I have from my aunt are my aunt from my mum's side. This is from Max on my dad's side. She loves horses, and I loved horses at the time. I enjoyed this, I read quite a few of them, but the only ones that I would care to return to myself would be um, The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis and Black Beauty. Now I have the entire Narnia collection up there, and I have a copy of Black Beauty on its own. So I don't need this anymore, and some other young kid, or old kid, who loves horses and ponies can pick this one up. Greyfriars Bobby. This was a difficult cool one to justify getting rid of. I got it as a kid when we went to go visit Edinburgh. I bought it in Edinburgh. It's about a little dog that was like devoted to his master in Edinburgh. True story then fictionalised. I didn't really enjoy the writing of this and also <laughs> remembering that Caitlin's Scottish so I was like I'm getting rid of this and she reminded me and what I mentioned at the time that I read this, this is written by an American, so it's fine, it's going, this is going. Why is an American written about Greyfriars Bobby? Um, but yes, this is fine, it's interesting, I don't care to keep it. The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. I've heard bad things about her as a person, but I am going to keep the full copy that I do have. The reason for this is that it's the first ever full copy or any copy of a book that I was sent by a publisher, a big house publisher, after requesting it. This was also sent to me by them, along with a sampler of Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Mary Griffin. This one's going. I, I don't need to keep it. I'm only keeping the other one for full sentimental reasons. I'm gonna keep the sampler for Other Words for Smoke because I loved Other Words for Smoke, but this can go. I'm not sure how to get rid of it because it's printed on like magazine paper, so I don't think it can be recycled. So I don't know what to do with it. But I'll find a way. One from my childhood. So we have Carrie's War by Nina Borden. So this is a World War II book about some children that are sent as evacuees to the countryside. The last sentence is, Carrie did a terrible thing, the worst thing she ever did in her life. 
Now I've read this a few times, a solid 10 times. I reread my books a lot as a child. <laughs> so I've read this a solid 10 times. However, despite the fact that I've read this 10 times, I have no emotional attachment to the story nor the book. It's good, it's written well, I think other kids would enjoy it, but it's not like one that I'm gonna cling to, so this one's going. Room by Emma Donoghue. This is really good, but I read it as an ebook. So this was going. This is about um, a young woman who was um, kidnapped, raped, had a child, and oh my god, I've just realised I might have to do the trigger warnings for every single book. I'm gonna do my best to do the trigger warnings for every single book that I'm unhauling, but if I miss some, I'm sorry. There's a lot of them. Anyway, <laughs> I was just like, ah, raped. Oh shit. Yeah, so this one definitely is one that would need trigger warnings, but it's it's really well done. I really enjoyed it. I got this. Did I get this from Bar Books? I did. I got this from Bar Books in Annick. Ah, well, it can go back to Bar Books. We have Miss Marple's Complete Short Stories by Agatha Christie. This one, you're probably thinking like, okay, but you like Agatha Christie, but the cover's ugly. Like, what's going on? So. This is the book, this is the book that got me back into reading again. This is the one. This is the book that I sat and I read through and this is the reason I am a reader. However, one, why is the entire font in bold? Pray tell why? And two, I've been able to get a Folio Society edition of it. So I have the book. So why am I keeping it? Othello by William Shakespeare. I hated this. I read it and then DNF'd it and then I read it again. Read through it and hated it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have to show you. Nob. <laughs> so as you can tell, I didn't have the greatest experience reading this one. Is that an alarm? Is that a bird? I don't know. What I do know is it's annoying. We have The Five Orange Pips and Other Cases by Arthur Conan Doyle. This is one of the penguin, what are they called? Penguin paper pack classics with the stripes. I one day really want to get just a bind up selection of um, the Holmes stories, so it seems redundant to have this. These are the remaining horrible geography books that I have. Now, any Brits will know of horrible histories. Oh no, that is my puzzle! There was also horrible geography. Horrible histories uh, got the TV show. Master of Illusion! Good heavens! Where has he gone? Well, he's clearly just down there, isn't he? Why would you do that? <laughs> Which I fucking love. The Horrible Histories were- the Horrible Histories, for fuck's sake. Horrible Geography was the same thing, but geography based. Ironically, I find this hilarious. I never owned Horrible Histories, ever. My mum only got me Horrible Geography. I don't know why. And then I ended up doing geography as a degree. This was not like, I was not pushed into this. I could have done anything that I so wanted. So I kept these for sentimentality reasons. So I kept, these are all, I think these are all by Anita Canary. Yeah, they're all by Anita Canary. And I kept these all for sentimental reasons. So Raging Rivers was kept because all three years of my undergrad focused on rivers. <laughs> Earth Shattering Earthquakes was kept because I did geohazards and earthquakes was one of the sections that we studied. On a related note, Violent Volcanoes was kept because that's what I did my thesis on in, in my masters. That was my thing, I focus on the volcanology side of geohazards. And then lastly, Stormy Weather was kept um, because a bit of a long story, but to try and simplify, uh, they would make packs for us to study in school at GCSE and A level, oh for fuck's sake, um, 15 to 18, uh, compulsory and elective study in the UK. and. One of the teachers who did the weather pack retired and the other teacher decided that he couldn't be asked to make his own pack so he was just going to use that um, and he didn't know anything about weather so we all had to teach ourselves it and I still don't know about weather <laughs> so this was kept in the intent that like I should really learn this and I haven't so I was keeping them for sentimentality reasons part of me wants to keep them but I don't need to it's not like I don't know the facts in the I mean maybe the weather one but I don't know it's not like I don't know the facts in these and I'm just gonna give up on weather okay I'm just giving up on weather so they're going then we have Uglies by Scott Westerfeld I've not read this I'm never gonna pick this up this is a very well-known dystopian but if you don't know to simplify the dystopian aspect here is that at 16 you get plastic surgery to look better and obviously then it's like oh my god no that's bad 
It sounds good. It sounds interesting, but I'm never gonna read it. So we've got Renegades by Marissa Mayer. This came out in the UK. In the UK. In April of 2018. It came out earlier in the US. Um, I picked this up because I'd heard about it from the US audience and I wanted to read it and also I think the cover's really cool. However, I've not picked it up. Another old dystopian YA and that's Delirium by Lauren Oliver. Again, I picked this up in the same kind of time scale where I really was like, I do really like dystopians, I should pick up the ones that I've not read. However, this one is all based upon love. So not only am I reading more adult than YA lately, but like when have you ever seen, mmm, I'm not reading an entire book about love, no, no. So this one's going. And that's another bag! Done! Easy peasy, squeeze the lemon. Okay, so, me and Caitlin had a conversation about this one, and at the time, it stayed on my shelves. It's not staying on my shelves anymore, I know this will make you sad, but... Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This is one of Caitlin's favourite books, however, it focuses quite deeply on mental health, and I struggle with my mental health, I'm pretty open about that, and I just don't think that I'll be able to read this one. I'm sure it is a fantastic book, it's going. My parents are back from the shopping, but they're going out again soon, so the final bag will be shown to you when they leave, which will be in like 0.3 seconds for you. 0.3 femtoseconds for you, a solid half an hour for me. Let's get back into it. Next up we've got Truth Sister by Phil Gilvin. It sounds really good, in concept, but I just have never picked it up. So why not let someone else enjoy it? I do not have. Then we have Scars Cross Humanity, Understanding and Overcoming Violence Against Women by Elaine Storkey. This sounds interesting. It does. But I've owned it for years, I picked it up secondhand, and I've not read it. So I think it's time to let it go on to a home where somebody will actually pick it up. One that was given to me by my dad, I stole it from him once he finished reading it, is Painting the Sun by Kim Hughes GC. This, the, this is about, it's a, what the, 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 this is an autobiography about a man's time in Afghanistan, yes, Afghanistan, and my dad was in the army, uh, he was deployed to Iraq, he trained for Afghanistan and didn't go when he was miffed, um, he really enjoyed this, he said, like, as far as I can tell, he said that it was, like, really accurate, really well done, I'm just truly not that interested, um, if I didn't have 140 other books on my TBR, then yes. If this was one of 5, 10, 20, 40 books on my TBR, then this would definitely be staying, but it's not. I have over 100, and so I need to prioritise. So this one's going. Then we have The Lie Tree by Francis Harding. Uh, Francis Hardinger, can't speak. This is one that sounds really interesting, but I've owned it for years and never picked it up. Next up we have, ooh, okay. So next up we've got The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. This is the copy that I got when I studied this in school. The receipt for this, the receipt for this is in the front still, uh, is from the 31st of January 2010. I've not picked this up since I read it in school. Okay, I used to know that Geography by Will Williams. I picked this up because Geography. The reason that I'm letting this go is I've read it, I probably won't read it again, and whilst it was very interesting, and I can tell you that it's, it's really factual and really good, I remember these facts. Because it's what I did my education in. So I'm going to let this go to somebody who has actually forgotten this stuff from school. I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. This is her autobiography about her life. This is a now a young woman, um, she's only a couple of years younger than me, who when she was a child was shot in the head by the Taliban for campaigning for girls' education. It was very interesting, it was really good, I recommend giving it a go, but it's not something I would reread. Okay, let, let's start with the non- ow, I scratched my hand against my bookshelf. <laughs> Let's start with the non-controversial ones, and that is going to be Reckoning and Renegade by Kerry Wilkinson. If you guys watch me and watch my content, you'll know that I read The Reckoning a couple of months ago. It was fine, and I, I was tempted. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, I can get rid of this. It was fine, it was eh, I don't need to keep it. But I was tempted to keep book two, Renegade. However, but the thing that really solidified this one going specifically with expectations weighing heavily on the girl with the silver streak in her hair. Will she ever find her way home? The main character's name, not only does she have a silver streak in her hair, her name's Silver. Okay, so another one that Olivia is gonna be sad at. Gone by Michael Brandt. I'm never gonna reread it, ever. 
and I'm not particularly attached to it. The reason why that's like, oh, Olivia is because she loves that series so, so much. But for me, Olivia, it's a Twilight sort of one where I would have loved it at the time, but we have another slightly controversial one as in it's loved by booktube and that is Cinder from the Luna Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I will also be getting rid of Scarlet when I find it. It's in a box in the garage. <laughs> so there will be another run haul at some point because there's books that I'm like okay these are going. I enjoyed this, I liked it. I'm just not in love with Marissa Meyer's writing. I'm not gonna not continue with the series but I also don't need to have these on my shelves. The book to Nets darling. I'm gonna get rid of the first trilogy of the Mortal Instruments series. These were fine. Again, if you watch me, you know my feelings on these. They are similar to Gone, and in that they're like Twilight books for me, in that if I'd read them at the time, I would have loved them, but reading them now, they're enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but they're trash at the same time. So I still have all of the other books by Cassandra Clare that I own and haven't read. I'm keeping them. I'm hoping that her writing style improves as time goes on. Obviously I've started with the first books that she published um, and I'm going forward from there. So I am still going to keep them. If it doesn't improve then I have a lot of books that I haven't read that I can unhaul. But yes, these first three are gonna go. These would have been fine if I'd read them in the library. If I borrowed these I would have read them and then not went and bought them. So why am I keeping them? on my shelves. I mean more accurately, why am I keeping these under my bed? That's the thing, these are the last three books, so I can now go on to a bit more info about the entire thing. These were from, all of these that I've picked, were from, well one of them was from The Loft and that's those kids books, the like, uh, at the very beginning, the very first ones I mentioned, like whales and rocks and stuff, those were kids books in The Loft, we were unhauling some stuff from there, so that's where they, those come from. The unread books came from my TBR shelf, and all of the red books came from under my bed. Just under my- I had about a hundred books under my bed. And a lot of these have come from there, and that's what- that's why they're going. They are under the bed, I have no intention of doing anything with them, I don't particularly care about them being there. I was just like, oh I don't want to get rid of them because I've just read them, so I'll keep them under there. They're going. They're going. And I'm hoping that when I'm actually able to sit down and go through the books that I have in the garage as well, that I'll be able to get rid of more books there. Um, I'm intending to ring Caitlin again for that one to go through them. There's some books that I had already went through, but it was when I was in like a really like, fine, I'll just get rid of everything, because we were all panicking about how much shite that we own. Uh, <laughs> and I don't actually want to get rid of all of those. Like, my toilet books were in there. Because I was like, well, they're trash, they're shit, they're useless, let's just get rid of them. But they're... Yes, they're shit. Yes, they're trash. Yes, they're awful. But they're mine awful. Leave them alone. I want to keep them. So, um, I need to go back through those, take the books out that I know I want to keep, and then also possibly put some more books in that I don't necessarily need to keep a hold of myself. So yeah, I've already pre-warned Caitlin that I'm going to do this at some point with her. <laughs> so she's ready and waiting. Um, so we'll go through those at some point. These are all the books that I'm unhauling. I have to count these. Uh, you're gonna get a little... Ta -da! That's how many books that I'm unhauling. And it'll be in the, the title or the thumbnail as well. But at the moment, all I know is that it's a fucking big pile. <laughs> but yes, so in terms of where these books will be going, it's going to be as many as I can get into that school. <laughs> um, and then the rest of them... Well, there's going to be the one going to my mum, which was the one that I'm published in, and then the two going to my partner that he bought me in the first place, but he is interested in reading, um, and the rest of them will just be donated somewhere. I was going to pan down the camera and show you the pile just as it is naturally, but that one from my school is like face up with the school showing, so no. But yeah, it's a lot of books and I now have to go tidy them. Caitlin thought that's another thing. If you've got this far in the video, hello, you clearly either for some reason are really bored and just letting it play in the background, or you've actually watched my content. So thank you. Hi. Caitlin thought that these were all of my books apart from my TBR. She thought my TBR was in my room and that these were all of my red books. This is less than a fifth of my red books, including the books that I'm unhauling today because they're still in my household. I probably have about a thousand books. There's still some under the bed, I didn't get rid of everything that's under there, I did keep some of them, some of them are childhood favourites, some of them are ones that I really love and they're in there because that's the quickest place I can store them for now, 
I have some big plastic boxes out in the garage. Um, I've got three boxes filled with books, as well as the 140, 150 on my TBR, and all of these. <laughs> so these are not all of my books. These are just a very small amount of my books. So this explains why, if anyone's ever been curious as to why I'm like, my parents are so angry with my friends for sending me books, this is why. I have a lot. I have I have a large number. I could, if I, this is a small room, I think I've shown you guys it before, this is a small room. If I lined the entire available wall space with bookshelves, I don't think, without double stacking, that I would be able to fit the wall in. Let me know if you've reached this far. If you've reached this far, put three book stack emojis down in the comments below. Because I have three bags. I never showed you, by the way. The third canvas bag. What? Oh. <laughs> I've got to put them all back in now. Uh, but yeah, so three, three book sacks for three stacks of canvas bags of books that I'm getting rid of. Thank you for watching this far. If you did, what the fuck is wrong with you? But thank you. And like and subscribe down below. And I will see you in the next video, which will not be anywhere near as fucking long as this one. Bye! I have to tidy these.